Training Center. My name is Austin Steeling. I'll be your instructor for this course. Today we're going to talk about caping out a white-tailed deer for a shoulder mount. This method will also work for a life-sized deer, but today we're doing a shoulder mount. To get started, we'll look at the deer a little bit. As you can see, it's a very beautiful early season short-haired deer cape. This deer was shot in September. This is kind of a rarity for Wisconsin to take one in this early, so it's going to be a very nice mount when it's completed. Uh, we want to look over the cape for any noticeable damage or slipping. Uh, some of the common areas where you will find slipping is in the ears. The hair will start to pull out. Uh, you want to be testing around on the body. You don't want to pull real hard because you will pull the hair out. Just a nice gentle pull and this is very good. There's no slipping that I can see anywhere on the face or on the body. You also want to look and be aware of tick damage. Oftentimes the ears will have a lot of ticks. There could be damage elsewhere on the deer. This deer looks very good. It has been in the freezer for about a year. The client just brought it in. They shot it last season. So it does have a little bit of freezer burn on this ear. And there could be some freezer burn issues elsewhere on the deer as well, but I don't see any at this point. It has a small hole in the back of the head right here in the neck. I'm not very concerned about that because that'll go right into our incision line when we make our incision to pull the skull out. Along with checking for slippage, it's also important that you check for any rot or decomposition on the deer. You will undoubtedly notice a foul odor when you get the deer in. And some of the things you can be looking for, which this deer does not have because it's a very fresh specimen, is a lot of this will be turning green. And that's going to give you a clear indication that the deer is starting to rot. The hair will be slipping out very easily. And it's going to be up to you at that point to decide if the cape is salvageable or not to mount. Now we're going to go over what tools we'll need to cape out the deer. We'll need a scalpel with a 22 blade, a bone saw to remove the horns from the skull, a calipers for doing the eye to nose measurement, a tape measure for measuring the deer's neck, and the, again the eye to nose measurement and some horn measurements as well, a camera to take pictures of the deer, and some borax. I always find it's very important when you take a deer in to take pictures of the deer. There's a couple of reasons for this. Uh, the first reason is if you would, if the tag would fall off the deer, you have picture reference to fall back on to identify whose cape this is. It's also important if the deer has excessive damage, you can take pictures of those areas to explain to the customer why you had to either change the pose or why you had to fix something. Also, oftentimes, deer have a tendency to grow in the hunter's head. So if you have pictures to fall back on, you can explain to them why the deer's neck may not be as big as the hunter thought or why the spread is what it realistically was, but the hunter just thinks it was bigger. Now we'll take a couple of the pictures of the deer. Normally, I would have this tagging out so I can clearly see it for the picture, but for this case, we just covered it. I'll just snap a couple of quick pictures. Again, this had a little bit of damage on the back. Like I said, I'm not concerned about it, but I will take a picture of it anyways, just for reference. Another key point in taking pictures is that you have some very nice reference to see exactly where the ears lined up based upon where the horns are. And you can really see this nice muscle definition. So I want to get a picture of that and that will help later on in the mounting process. Now that we've taken all the necessary pictures of the deer, we want to move into the measurement process. Before we start the measurement process, I want to touch briefly on safety. It's very important whenever you're working on any animal that you wear latex gloves. This can keep all the blood off of you and any potential diseases that might come from the animal. It's also important that you wear an apron to keep, again, all those different things off of you. Now we'll go into the measurements. I recommend having a notebook where you keep all your measurements in to keep track of the measurements for all the different animals that you take in, as well as any special notes on the deer, such as the data was shot. The reason why it's important that you keep track of the data was shot is because the neck is going to continue to swell as you move into later season. This deer was shot in September, so it's going to have a pre-rut neck or a relatively smaller swell in the neck. The three periods are pre-rut, rut, and post-rut. And those are going to vary depending on where you're located. Now we're going to start with the A measurement or the eye to nose measurement. 
the eye to nose measurement is measured from the front corner of the eye to the center of the nose pad. I recommend using a calipers for this because you get a much more accurate measurement of this. So we'll push this right into the front corner, right onto the bone of the eye, and come right to the center of the nose pad. And then we'll tighten this down so we don't lose our measurement. We'll take, come with the tape measure and we'll measure the distance between the two points which is going to be seven and a half inches. We'll write that down in our measurement notebook. The A measurement, eye to nose, is seven and a half inches. Now that we've taken the eye to nose measurement, that's all the measurements you want to take at this time until we have the deer caped out. If we, if we were to come and take the B and C measurement at this time, we would be getting all the hair in the measurement, which is going to give us an inaccurate reading. Usually, depending on how thick the deer's hair is, that might give us an inch or two more than what we would originally need. So we would take those measurements, the B and the C measurement, after we have it caped out. One thing that I find handy to do in aligning the horns when we're during the mounting process of the deer is to take a quick measurement from the tip of the horn to the center of the nose pad on each side. That's going to provide a valuable reference for us during the mounting process. So I'll simply Measure from the corner, right from the tip of the horn to the center of the nose pad, which is going to give us about a 15 inches on the deer's right side. I'll mic that down. Deer's right, 15 inches. The distance from the left side, the deer's left, is going to be 14 and a half inches. Now that we have the measuring completed, we're going to talk about what type of incisions we want to use to cape the deer out. There are three main incisions that are commonly used. The Y incision, the T incision, and the 7 incision. The Y incision follows the deer's hair pattern. As you can see, right here, most deer will have a hair pattern that runs on the top of their head. We will make an incision from right where that meets the horn butt in a Y formation, one straight line this way, another straight line this way, and then come right down the back of the head, back of the neck, right to where the meat stops. That's the Y incision. Another type of incision is the T incision, which runs straight across antler butt to antler butt, right like this, and then comes right down the center. There's also a seven incision, which is similar to the T incision, which comes from one antler butt to the next antler butt, and then comes down in a line like this. Now we're going to start the caping process. I usually like to start by skinning out around the deer's lips and the nose. Again, I'm going to use a 22 scalpel blade. So to start, we want to cut right along the deer's skull where it meets the lip. So we, we want to keep all of this membrane, all this lip material on the deer's skin. We don't want to leave that on the skull. So we're going to cut right along the gum line. We're going to come right up around the nose. We don't want to cut through the nose pad. We want to just be skinning right around here. I'm going to come and do the back side here. I apologize for not being able to see it. We will swing back on the front, and again, I'm just following the skull right around. We want to cut right through the deer's septums. We don't want to cut into the nose pad. We want to cut right through the septums. Now we want to start cutting closer to the skin. We don't want to leave all this meat on the skin. It's going to make a harder fleshing process. We just want to be cutting right around where the meat meets the skin. That's about as far as we have to skin down on the top. We're going to do the same procedure on the lower jaw. Again, we're going to cut right through where the gum line meets the skull. We do not want to cut this lip area. We want to keep that attached to the deer. We'll need that later for tucking it into the form.
When we come down to the corner, as you can see, we have a lot of, of this extra lip material here, the gum line. We don't need all of this. If we were doing an open mouth, we would want to keep it, but because we're going to be doing a closed mouth deer, we only need a very small amount of this. So we're going to cut right through that gum line, making sure we don't cut through the skin on the other side. Cut right up to where you can start to see the skin. Then we're just going to continue skinning right down. All that's been disconnected. We'll now move on to the other side. All right, now we have the other side skinned as well. As you can see, we skinned it down right along the, where the gum meets the lower jawbone and the upper jawbone. And we left a little bit of this lip material on the deer, which we will need later for tucking. Now that we have all this disconnected, we wanna move on to the back side of the deer skull, start with our Y incision there. Now we're gonna start with the Y incision. As you can see, this deer has a very definite hair pattern, and that's the line we're gonna be following to make our Y incision. So with our scalpel, we wanna come right next to the horn button, cut right through the skin. You wanna make sure that you're not cutting the hair when you're doing this. You wanna kind of part the hair aside and come right on the corner and follow that hair pattern right down till we come to the center of the hair pattern or the center of the deer where we're going to be making a line down the back. We have our first incision made. We'll now make an incision on the other side. Again, we will follow the hair pattern right down, coming from the corner of the horn butt. Again, trying to minimize as much, not cutting through hair as much as we can. Want to make sure that we connect those two incisions. Now that we have the two first part of the Y incision made, we'll slightly skin back up on the skull cap. Let's make sure that everything is disconnected there. Now we'll make our incision going all of the way down to where the meat stops. Again, as you can see, my scalpel, the angle that I had my scalpel at. And if you remember, there was a hole in the back of this deer, and we're going to connect that incision right with that hole so we don't have to have one continuous seam. As you can see, we've come all the way down to where the meat stops. Now we will start skinning up along the sides of the deer. We are cutting right along where the skin meets the meat. We don't want to leave this meat on the deer's skin. We're just going to have to flesh it off later. So as close as you can skin, right up next to the skin, the better. Now we're coming to the ear butt. We want to cut next to the skull. If you start cutting right here through the ear butt, you're gonna cut right through your ear canal. You wanna cut right next to the skull so you can leave as much of the ear butt there as possible. You can see here is the ear canal. We cut right through. Nice little hole right there, it's not a problem. Now we'll repeat the process on the other side. So now we're gonna start removing the skin from around this side of the antler butt. Gonna cut right around. Again, we're just following the skin right around the antler butt and pulling as we go.
and there we've removed all the skin from around both antler butts. As you can see, that's been completely disconnected and we can now start skinning down the rest of the skull. Okay, now that we have the skin removed from around the antler butts, we want to start skinning down the rest of the deer's face towards the eye. So we're simply going to start cutting right along the skin. As you can see, I'm just following the skin right down along the skull. Now as we approach the eye, we want to take special care that we don't cut through the skin around the, eye, around the eye. We just want to cut right through the membrane that's holding the skin to the skull. Now that we've made a little incision here, I want to put my finger through the skin of the eye socket and pull on this. So that's going to help me to remove the rest of the skin from the skull. Now we've removed all of the eye area from the skull. We're going to start working down the tear duct. Uh, the tear duct is a very delicate part of the deer. You do, the tear duct is this white skin area. You don't want to make a hole in that if at all possible. So what we want to do is skin as close to the skull as possible. Okay, so we've just cut through the tear duct area. As you can see, we kept the tear duct intact. Now, one thing we have to do as well is we have to finish skinning out around the neck now that we have this area all loosened up around the eyes. So we are going to start skinning around the neck. We've skinned out that side. We'll move to the other side now. We're going to lift the deer up, balance it on its nose and horns as we skin this underside of the neck. Now, as you can see, we're starting to entering into the lower jaw area. We're going to continue to just keep skinning right down. Just going to pull this skin while I'm cutting. As you can see, we're starting to meet up with our first incision along the face. Flip the deer over, 
continue on this side as well. that right off there. Now we remove the skull from the cape. Now that we have the skull removed from the cape, it's time to take the B and C measurements. If you remember, we already took the A measurement was from the front corner of the eye to the center of the nose before we started skinning. Now that we have the deer skinned, we'll start with the B and C measurement. So to start, we would do the C measurement which runs directly behind the deer's skull, the circumference right around behind the deer's skull. Which is gonna be 15 inches. Next, we'll wanna do the B measurement, which is roughly two inches from right where we were before. At the 15, we'll come two inches down to the B measurement, which is going to be about 16 inches. We'll go ahead and write those down on our measurement sheet for future reference. Now that we have all our measurements made, we need to remove the deer's antlers from the skull. So what we want to do first is get rid of this little bit of meat that's on the back of the skull plate. Just to save a little bit of time later. Now, we need, in order to remove the antlers from the skull plate, we need to make two cuts. The first cut is going to be running right along here, roughly an inch, inch and a half down on the skull plate. And our second cut is going to be coming at a straight angle right underneath. So roughly about an inch, inch and a half, we'll start our cut. It's important that you try to make this cut as straight as possible. You can adjust it later, but it's easier to do it right now. That's about as far as we need to cut in. Now we'll swing from the back. We're gonna make a straight cut from right here to connect to, to our first cut. Now that we've removed the antlers from the deer skull, we can go ahead and discard this deer skull. Now that we have the antlers removed from the skull, we need to start cleaning up this whole skull plate area. So to get started, we want to get rid of this brain material that's left in the skull cavity, the brain cavity of the deer. We want to take a pliers and pull out this membrane that runs on the inside of the skull cap. I want to make sure all that's all there because that can attract bugs later on if that's not removed. As you can see, we have this membrane removed from the inside of the skull cap area. Now we want to start cleaning off all this excess red meat that runs around the skull cap. I'm just going to cut right along the bone and remove as much of this meat as possible. You can actually start scraping this off as well. Come along and repeat the process on this side.
What I think I'm actually going to do to speed up removing this meat process is just make a cut right along here to get rid of some of this excess meat in the back. I'm going to be cutting at a slight angle so I don't disrupt. That removed a lot of that excess meat. Now we're going to continue to clean up all this red meat that you see along the skull cap. Okay, I'm just scraping and cutting right along the bone. Removing all this excess membrane. At this point, you can also come around and remove any of the excess skin or hair that's around the horn butts. And the reason why you want to get rid of all this meat is because if you don't, after the animal is mounted, it will attract bugs onto your mount. All right, now that we have most of the meat removed with the scalpel, we're going to come on with a wire brush and just start to remove any excess meat that we can with this wire brush. You can see we have most of all the meat gone. At this point, you can either prepare this to go into a boil to boil all this meat off, or you can cover it with borax for, to work on it later. It's going to rub the borax into all the different areas of the skull. Now that we have the borax rubbed on, we'll go ahead and kind of blow it off of the mossy area of the deer antlers. And now is also a very good time to remove any blood that may be on the horns. You can just use a paper towel and water and we'll just wash off the horns to get rid of any blood that we put on them from during the skinning process. going to wipe these down, remove any blood. Now that we have all the blood removed from the horns, we can set these aside and move on to the fleshing of the deer. In this video, we're going to go over how to properly 
freeze a cape after you have it caped off the deer. Uh, situations may arise where you may not be able to flesh it immediately. So this is gonna show you how to freeze it. I recommend double tagging everything, all of your specimens to, and I like to go right through the corner of the eye, right through where the horn butt was. Just simply zip tie a tag right to that area. Make sure the customer's name and invoice number is on it for later reference. Before you freeze the deer, you wanna make sure it's thoroughly cooled down. You can cool the deer cape down quickly by laying it flat in a freezer until it's very cold and then wrapping it up. This deer is already cooled down, so we'll start by wrapping the ears in to protect the delicate ears. Fold in the lips and we're just gonna roll the cape right up. Right like this. Make sure you use a good strong bag. You don't want the deer to fall out of the bag when you're putting it in and out of the freezer. You want to make sure that you get all the air out of the bag. Just squeeze it all right out. Then we're going to zip tie another tag to the outside of the bag to make it very easy to find and identify when we're put it into the freezer. 